Scotland. Tell you what, it's a bit of a wintry day out there, but it's okay. I've got a cup of tea, so it's all good. It's all good. Right, enough talk. Let's get into this. Let's move on, because it's time to move on. Okay, so first things first, let's get the car started. Let's get a bit of heat in here. The old heated seats going as well. These heated seats are great, by the way, on the Mercedes SL. They heat up in no time at all. It takes about maybe three, four minutes and you already start to feel the warmth. What we're gonna do, we're gonna get the iCar soft out. It's a favorite of a lot of people on my channel and I'm not gonna do any scripting. I'm just gonna plug this in. I'm gonna see what's going on on this Mercedes. I haven't got any issues. However, I don't use the car all the time and it sits standing without being driven for a good sort of three or four weeks at a time. Now there's an awful lot you can do with iCarSoft. So I'm gonna go through the menus, actually remind myself what you can do. And I thought it's a great opportunity to have a look together. And uh, you can see at first hand, if you think about buying one of these, what it can do. So uh, let's, let's, let's have a look. So here we are, here's the unit. Powers up by the car by this cable which I'm going to plug in. Little tip, I like to put a little mark on the cable so that I know which way to insert it because as you can see it uh, only goes one way. You don't want to damage these pins. So I plug this in down here. The OBD port on the Mercedes and in most cars always has to be within one meter reach of the driver. I then simply connect the other end in of your cable into the top of the iCar soft like so, and it should come on. There it is. Screw these on. And let's have a play and see what we can see. So, can you do me one thing? And you know I'm gonna ask, but I'm not gonna ask it in the same way like everybody else does. And I'll tell you the reason why. All these people that say, oh, can you subscribe and hit the bell and all the rest? By all means do, that's fine. But the reason I want you to do one thing for me, and it's only one thing, is just give me a thumbs up. What that does is it actually tells me on my analytics which videos are doing okay. And without that thumbs up, it's very difficult to tell. But if this video has been useful for you, just give me that thumbs up and then I'll know to do more. So let's get into this. So the main screen that comes up looks like this. It's the main screen for the system. And along the top, I've showed this before, you've got your diagnostic, your diagnostic, you've got your service, your voltage, etc. So let's start with what this screen actually does um, rather than going detailed into the Mercedes diagnostic because these are more generic and they are still very useful. All right, so let's have a little play here. Let's run through these uh, little icons. So the diagnostics is where you go into the specific car. You've got your service, which shows you things which you would have on generic uh, setups for a service for a car, oil reset, electric parking brake, uh, battery maintenance service etc DPF that's a good one too now obviously this Mercedes is a, is a petrol so I'm not gonna have a diesel particle filter but nevertheless it gives you an idea so using these keypads here um, I've, I've done it so that you can see for yourself exactly what buttons I press and uh, just gonna go back to the screen before the one of the first things I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go down to setup set up here actually is for this unit nothing to do with the cars so press enter go into that you've got things like language unit of measure so obviously in the states you'd be using imperial now the buzzer i'm going to get rid of that just to make it a little less annoying so hit that off so now we have no little buzzer which is good right so back into this main screen again um, you've got obd check that's quite good if you just want a quick check to see what codes perhaps are on the car and if there is any faults. So why don't we go into that? Let's hit enter. Now it's going to search. It's just checking it. Whilst it's doing it, importantly, I have a little cup of tea. Mm. So what have we got? We haven't got any codes found, but this is just an overview. Um, it monitored eight uh, different areas. Um, monitored not supported too. Now this could be that it could be like... Um, uh, if you've got active banking control suspension, ABC suspension, for example, so that's not uh, that's not showing. So let's go back. Uh, but at least you know what that function does. DTC lookup. Well, that's kind of handy. 
um, it will tell you what the uh, code is. So you enter the code using the, the, the keys, uh, the thumb wheel here, and the P and then whatever code it is donates what the fault is. Now, actually, when you run the test in a minute, you'll, you'll see and I'll show you that the faults are actually um, already described. And you can also take that code and just enter it uh, straight into your phone and find out if you, if you really wanted to. So don't really use that function, but nevertheless, there it is. Right, importantly, um, oh, one last thing, let's go into voltage. So as you hit the voltage here, this is handy if you wanna check that your voltage alternator is actually charging the right amount. Now, as you can see, you've got 13.9 fluctuating there. And if I move this camera down, if I open my little ashtray, I also have a little voltmeter I've installed. Now this says 14.2, but the actual reading that I'm getting there is fluctuating around the 14. So it's a good indication where you want to check to make sure that your alternator is doing its thing. Um, for example, if I was to turn on the lights, we should see a little change, dip down, went back up. And that's the important thing that it stays around that um, that voltage and here you can see that the minimum was 13.59 volts and the maximum from this test is 14.12 and then we can use that to make sure things are working as they should right well anyway i'm warm enough now so let's turn the engine off okay so let's crack on let's go back and we're going to go back to diagnostics let's hit that there now it's going to load up all the different cars that you've got. Now I've done a previous video, I'll stick it down below, and that actually shows you how you can add, if you've got the iCarsoft V2, you actually add up to 10 cars of the types of cars that you would generally have. You might have two or three, and it will allow you to have that on there at no extra cost, which is great. Mercedes-Benz is what we want today, let's go into that. This version list here, that's not the version of the car, that's the version of the software. I've updated it recently. You can remove the old software if you want to, but I just generally go to the highest number, 11.85. That's the new software. Let's enter into that. Once this loads, it's then going to ask you what car that you have. So the model that I have is a 2004 Mercedes SL and it's an R230 chassis. And here you can see in alphabetical order what they are. You've got everything there from the beginnings of your 201 chassis, A, uh, B class, C class, etc. So if I go all the way through these, I'm going to get to S class at the end. Okay, you've got the GL wagon there, which is good. The ML Maybach. It's got Maybach on there for the luck. For those of you lucky enough to have a Maybach. All right, here we go. So we have SL. So SL230, enter that. And then the years. So this is 2004, so it's going to be the middle one, 2003 to 2008. And now we're going to select the engine type. So to understand what the engine type is, the easiest way to do it is simply to open the door. So here we are, WDB230 as the chassis. And then the next set of numbers are 4672F. That bit there you'll need so that you can understand exactly what engine type you want. And by the way, if you ever wonder what the paint is, you've got your paint code there on as well. Right, so back into this then. If you remember, it was 46... If you remember, it was 467. There it is there, 467. Enter that. Smart scan, manual scan. Um, smart scan will automatically work out what aspects that this unit and the software can actually work with the particular car you got so i'm going to enter that and now here we go one of, thir of 33 it's going to run through and as it starts to run through let's have a look at the dashboard and you'll start to see certain lights will flash on and off And it's quite a comprehensive uh, diagnostic it does for the Mercedes, so it takes about a minute or so. We just get to 33 there, so it's finished its uh, check. And here we've got one of 27 items that it's going to check. And within each of these items here, there's going to be sub-menus and all sorts of other little goodies that we can go into. Now, I don't know if there's any faults in this car. There may be pre-existing faults, and we can try and clear them. So let's go into the first one, engine control module. Let's see what's going on there. So again, this is always what you get up. It's a function list, module information, refault code, 
clear fault memory view data. So we're going to read the fault code and see what's going on in there. Reading fault codes. Wow, straight off the bat, there we go. We have P207F-001. And it tells you it's an historic fault. So that's been on this car for a while. And it's got G3-3 left O2 sensor before TWC uh, slash KAT aging correction viable exceed daily time too long. Then another code down there at P2098. Now, some of these, as I said, they may be on the system, they may be on the ECU of the car. It doesn't necessarily mean your car's not going to work, but you can clear them. And if they don't come back, happy days. If they do come back, well, if the car's working OK, I wouldn't worry too much about it. But they are there, obviously, to tell you. So let's go back and we're going to clear the fault code. Go down to clear fault memory, press enter. Fault code and freeze date information uh, will be erased. I wish to continue. You always get that little uh, warning. Press F2. Erase operation done. Now here's the important thing. Now we're going to go back and we're going to go and see if that fault code is still there. So F1 to go back. Read fault code back into that and let's see what happens. It's still there. So left oxygen sensor. I mean, it's probably it's going to be something to probably do with the exhaust. Um, I don't seem to have any issues at the moment, so I'm not going to worry too much about it. But it is historic. Um, so, yeah, let's uh, let's move to the next one and see. Bit of a shame it wouldn't clear, but hey ho. All right, back. So that was the engine control module. Let's go into transmission control module. Obviously, the this is an auto box. So let's see what uh, what it's got for me in this. Refault memory. Go into that. No, no faults found. Excellent. I must admit, I do tend to find the Mercedes gearboxes are pretty much bulletproof. They are so good. I've had E classes. Mercedes 190s, C classes, CLK, all autos, all being great, never had an issue. Touch wood, fingers crossed. Let's go back and uh, we'll go to the next section and see what we can see. Right, electronic selector module. Um, this is to do with the gear shift, I believe. Communicating, let's go into reading fault code. What have we got? No fault codes. Good. Back out of that. Electronic stability program. That's your ESP or your, you know, your uh, little warning, the triangle light that comes up on the dash. That's that one there. That usually flicks on when you press the ESP button often on there. And that's when you can have a bit of fun and get the back end to, to slide out. All right, refault my code. Let's see if there's anything there at all. Oh, here we go. We've got a historic fault, ABS anti-locking braking system control. This could have been where I've disconnected it. Um, this is one of three, so let's move on to the next one. And there's another one there. And there is a DTR, the CAN confirmation communication, sorry, the engine control module is faulty. Now, I'm hoping this is going to clear. I think this is where I had to disconnect something when I was working on the brakes. So here's a good little test. We've got three codes there. Um, there's a good chance that it's been triggered. One code has triggered all of them. So uh, I've just gone back too far. But nevertheless, go back into electronic stability program. Now, I know there's three faults there. So I'm going to go straight down to clear fault memory. Let's hit that. See what it says. Erasing codes F2 to continue. Read fault memory. Let's see. Well, it's still there. One of three. And ABS anti-locky braking system control. Well, it's it's still on there. It's historic, but I'll not be able to clear it on this instant. Um, I know the ABS is working okay, and I don't get any issues that come off my dashboard. So again, I'm going to leave that one alone. And let's see what the next one has to say. Sensortronic brake control. This is a very clever little system that, um, in fact, when this car came out, it had the biggest brakes of a production vehicle. 
they're quite normal compared to the modern cars, but nevertheless, they were huge back in the day. Um, so let's read the fault code. And there's a four pot, the four pot calipers on these brakes, which end up um, really reducing the distance between the brake disc or the rotor in America and the actual brake pad. And it automatically adjusts. No fault code found. That's what I wanted to see. All right, let's go back and let's see what else we can see. So we've gone into the brakes and the next one on the list is your supplementary uh, inflatable restraints, the SRS. Um, I'm not going to go into that. I don't have any issues. Um, if you've got an airbag that's been deflated, that's obviously going to come up. Instrument cluster. Let's see. Don't have any issues with the instrument cluster, but let's have a little read and see. Read fault codes. Shouldn't say anything. Oh, yeah. Fault in CAN communication with the control module. Oh, interesting. One of four. What's the next one? Fault in CAN communication with control module EIS electronic ignition switch. All right. OK. Or in communication with control module electronic ignition switch and central gateway. Next one, uh, control module ICS, instrument cluster with service individual display has detected over voltage or transmission fault. And the battery voltage to the transmission car is too low. Now that could just be that a low, um, a low battery, but uh, should we try and clear them? Why not? Let's go back. Right, clear the fault memory, let's go to that. It's gonna say F, uh, press F2 next, done that. Erase and done. F1 to go back. Erase done. Let's go back into read fault codes and see what we can see. No fault code found. That's what you want to see. So I've cleared that historic information. We don't have any more issues. Let's move on to the next one. Now this one of 33, I may not go through every single one. I don't want to bore you with it, but I hope this gives you a really good overview at least of what you can do with the Mercedes and what you'd expect if you bought one of these iCar softs. My air conditioning has been okay. I don't have any issues. I'm not going to bother checking that one. Headlight range, left front. Again, headlights are fantastic on this car. They've got the projectors, so I'm not going to bother with that either. Electric seat adjustment, left front. They are working fine. I don't have any reasons to check it, so I'm going to move on. Let's keep going down. We're at 12 or 27. Central gateway. Let's have a look at that. CGW. Control, control module information. By the way, you can enter that and that will tell you things like part number, the manufacturer, even the year of manufacturer. Let's have a look and see what it says. So it is supplier video. There you go, Mercedes-Benz number. It's got that on there if you wanted to find another one. And it even tells you what the software status was. So F1 go back. We're going to read and see if there's any fault codes. Read fault code. Press enter. No fault codes found. Go back. Twice. Oh, I've gone too far. I think I'm going to go back out the system now. Oh, there we go. Electronic. I don't want to end. I see I've pressed a mistake there, but it tells you. Are you sure you want to exit? No, because otherwise I've got to go through this again. And it should go back to where I was. Good. Right, so we got transmission control module. That was the beginning. So we want to skip down to where we were. See, this is not scripted. I'm just doing it as I feel fit. And you can see for yourself. Now, keyless go, I do have an issue. And I know what the issue is, and I haven't got around to fixing it. And it's basically the, the driver's side, so on, it's on the right-hand side for me, I'm in, a, I'm in the UK, isn't um, working. The One of the micro switches is gone. So when you touch the door handle like that, it should unlock the car. Passenger side is working, driver's side isn't. So it's probably going to tell me that there's an open circuit or something. Um, I must buy another one and replace it, and I'll do a video on how to do that. Here we go, look. Front door pressure, pressure contact point, short circuit to ground. There's an issue with it. It's probably got a bit of corrosion in there. Um, what's the next fault? Trunk lid remote control button, unlocking short circuit to ground. So there's been a bit of an issue with the trunk lid as well. So let's try clearing this. Let's see what happens. Um, I'm, not look, I'm, I'm not expecting it to clear because I know that there's a permanent fault. And that's the whole point of the 
um, uh, the why it's, it's important to try and clear it. And if it comes back, then you know if it doesn't clear, there is a permanent fault. F2 to continue. Oh, look, failed to complete arrays operation. It's interesting. Let's go back and do that again. Haven't seen that come up many times. So refault code or clear fault code. Let's try clear fault code. Clear fault memory. Press F2. Ah, doesn't want to do it. Right, F1 back. And back again. So if there's a section that you want me to go into specifically, could you do me a favor and put it in down below and I'll happily go through it with you. Um, you can then see for yourself rather than spending a good sort of, these cost about 150 UK pounds um, for, for you guys in America, probably about 200, 200 bucks. Um, steering control module, door control module. I mean, the list goes on what these things can do. Um, as I said, I don't wanna make the video too long. Um, Partronic system, I did have an issue with that and I've managed to fix it. So there may be some historic issues on that. Pneumatic system equipment, um, it's all there. You know, there's, there's, there's an awful lot that you can play with on this. So there you go. What do you think? It's a good bit of kit, isn't it? I like to do these videos. Can't speak. <laughs> I like to do these videos because it shows you, I think, a real indication. I haven't scripted any of this. I've just simply plugged it in. I thought it would be a good opportunity to see if there's anything on the car because I don't use it every single day. You can see for yourself the level of detail you can go into. So if you are thinking of getting a diagnostic tool and you want one that covers quite a few, in fact, you can get one of these iCarsofts. And I'm not sponsored by iCarsoft, by the way. I just happen to have one. And I've had a lot of people showing a lot of interest. So I thought I'd do a few more videos to help you. And that's what my video channel is all about, is to try and help people save money and have a go at trying to fix that problem yourself. You may be unsure, and I'm hoping in some way I've actually given you just a little bit of confidence to maybe try and tackle it yourself. You can buy these iCar Softs, and I'll stick it down below, but you can get one that does all cars now. This particular one, I told you about it before, you can actually have 10 cars, but there are ones that do all models. And that's well worth looking into. Again, there'll be a link below. So look, if this has been useful for you, all I'd ask is one thing. Just give me a thumbs up. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this. Thanks very much for watching. Bye for now.